I'm getting rather anxious, Connie, about Stinker Parslow. She wouldn't call him that. Who? Stinker. I mean, it's a Gregory. A fat pig competition coming on, eh? But you like the fellows up to no good. So I've taken the precaution of inviting Galahad down from London. What? I knew you'd be pleased. He's so resourceful in a crisis. I do not allow Galahad to visit Blandings. Connie, Galahad's our little brother. Every time he sets foot in the house, something reprehensible occurs. Mm. Poor Bishop Bostock. Drinking such a large glass of water and finding it was vodka. Ah, uh, well, yes. Subsequently, we did have the pleasure of seeing Bostock do the can-can. <laughs> I've always wondered what senior clergy wore under their raiments. If Galahad causes me even the slightest embarrassment, I shall saw off your head and drop kick it into the herbaceous border. What, from here? No. Seriously, though, Connie, porcine subterfuge from Stinker. We must be on our guard, eh? Come on, Your Majesty. I'm come, sweetheart. Oh, lovely Empress. Oh, girl. You are such a grotesquely bloated pig. Bloated. Bloated. You simply could not eat another thing, however tasty. I have here, Vincent, a plate of the very finest sticky willies. Do help yourself. No thanks. Fabulous. She goes like a bird, but I think I'll wait for the supercharger. Gally! Ready! <laughs> Hello, my boy. I say, is that yours? Test drive. Oh, gonna buy a Lagonda. Don't be silly. I need you to lift. <laughs> you find your way back all right? Good man. <sighs> yes. Matter of fact, it suits me to be back in the old hovel. I want some peace. I need to squeeze my buxom muse till a pretty pip squeak. What do you need, my boy? Oh, uh, money? Uh, of course. May our innermost desires be granted. <laughs> ah, beat you, hound! Mr. Galahad! Did you put your vest on baby bones to romp it at Kempton Park? I did, sir. Thank you for the advice. Good man. Your usual mid-morning refreshment, sir? Oh, first of the day. Except for the one I had at breakfast. Cheers. Mmm. Ah, right, young Freddy. Let's say boo to your old man, shall we? Pinch! <laughs> ah. Oh, splendid. <sighs> Galahad is here. I've been thinking about Galahad. Capital, how clever of you to invite him down. <laughs> <laughs> Galahad! Dear old Clarence. Hello, sis. <laughs> little trick I picked up in the cavalry. Well, you were never in the cavalry. The club, not the regiment. Go ahead. What is your purpose? On Earth, generally to sprinkle joy and gladness. At Vlandings, to recollect the telling detail that makes the simply sensational gripping. What? I'm writing my memoirs. Memoirs? Oh, what a marvellous idea. I've got a title. Hello to all this. Oh, very cool. Boko Bagshot, Dogface Weeks, Binky Bender, Fruity Biffin, Fatty Coleman, <laughs> Stiffy Halliday, <laughs> Buffy Struggles, uh, all those reckless, roistering gay blades. Young Parslow, even. Great Mayfair days, Freddy. They called me the Shadow, forever marauding, never captured. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Pink Pussy, you know, they, they call me uh, flat, unfurnished. Yeah, it's a joke, apparently, about my head. I couldn't care less. People say I'm ignorant. I don't even know the meaning of the word. <laughs> That's the spirit, my boy. Fellow your age ought to be a beau sabreur about town. Oh, oh, but Galahad, London. Frightful. All sorts of ghastly people coagulate in London. Once, quite incredible. I dined at the senior conservative, and the waiter served me a rubber hot water bottle with chipped potatoes. By no means incredible, Clarence, for who was it? Masquerading as a wrinkled retainer of your club. 
Your neighbour, Stinker Parsley. Yeah. Remember him? Strutting about in front of Buckingham Palace with a soup tureen on his head and a stick of celery down his breeches singing, Call me whoopsie. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in my book. Galahad. Absolutely disgusting behaviour. Not to mention the hideous incident of the prawns. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. No, you do not. Oh, on that note, I must telephone the Mammoth Publishing Company. Talk amongst yourselves. Hello. Mm. I shall enjoy reading Galahad's book. No, you won't. If this book is published, the entire family will be ostracised. Everybody we know will be polluted by his regurgitation of their youthful indiscretion. It's your fault he's here, Clarence, you shuddering jelly of imbecility. He must be stopped by you. Oh. Oh, excellent, excellent. I shall surrender my manuscript to your courier. Yes, name again? Trap. Trap. Um, if Drabble could bring cash? Splendid, splendid. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. <sighs> um, Connie has sent you here to tell me something. She has, Galahad. She has indeed. Yes. Uh, um, now look here. Mm -hmm. um, she fears the wrath of those hypocritical bounders like young Parslow when I blow the gaff on their juvenile hijinkery, yes? Yes. Mm. Uh, but are we intimidated by Connie? Yes. No, we are not. She's chucking her weight about Clarence and it's not to be borne. You should have sat on her head in the nursery. Oh. Ah, Beach. Is it time for a drink? Cook wishes to know if you'll be dining here this evening, sir. Your eyelid's twitching. That's a tell. What are you concealing? Sir Gregory Parslow Parslow is also dining here this evening. Oh, no. Is he? Is he? Clarence, do you think Cook could be persuaded to serve us prawns? Oh, uh, the uh, beach. I shall see if it can be arranged, sir. Ah, mm. Excellent. <laughs> just pointless, just pointless. Well, no, uh, not really, actually. The gooey bit at the bottom. Asking your father to do anything. He couldn't influence his way out of a straw hat. What have you come here for? Um, lunch? I mean, to Blandings. You need money, don't you? <laughs> no, 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 no. How much? Uh, 50 quid? Yeah, a bit of a mix up at the Pink Pussies. Uh, I, yeah. shudder. I wish to hear no more. I will settle this debt for you, Freddy. On the condition that you find your uncle's filthy manuscript and bring it to me. On no account must it be allowed to reach the publisher. Mammoth could ruin Blandings. I think, Freddy, I shall adjourn to my office. Uh, office? Others know it as the conservatory. <laughs> Do you mind tootling down to the bus stop to scoop up a certain Les Drabble from my publishers? Rather important business. Um, how, how will I uh, know him? He's a veteran carrier, so I imagine he'll have a soft hat, a poorly shaven chin, and the glazed expression of the paunched and bored. Always carry a false bottom, Freddy. That's my advice. What's the matter with you, stupid animal? Can't you understand English? Concentrate. Now, food. Ugh. The very thought of it disgusts you. Food. Ugh. What the hell are you doing? I'm not doing anything. Just merely going out for a stroll. Thought I'd take a look at your pig. And, um... 
check her pulse. Yes, I'm researching pig pulses. Pig pulses? Uh... Yes. I'll expand on the matter later this evening when I, uh, when I dine with you. Well, I call this a rum business stinker. And if you were still here, you'd be very chastened to hear that. Hey, are you um, looking for somebody? Oh, snap. Yeah, I, I, I had to meet someone. Yeah, but I missed him. The mammoth. Oh, have you got a name? Oh, Freddie Threewood. No, I mean for the mammoth. Oh, uh, um, oh, I uh, can't remember. A name befitting as a soft man with a, a poorly shaven hat who used to be a glazier. Yeah. Yeah, with a paunch. Travel. Oh, that sort of thing, yes. Uh, ears like cauliflowers, probably a nose too. Uh, mission was to whiz him up to Blandings to fetch a manuscript and also to stop him getting it. Family honour in peril and so forth. Well, never mind. I tried. That's the main thing. Oh, look, there's a pub. You care for a drinky? How very kind, but I'd rather have to get to Blandings Castle. Uh, aha. Well, there, I, uh, I may be of service to you. Uh, miss... Just call me Leslie. Oh, Leslie. People tend to forget my surname. but no cigar. <laughs> if you publish this disgusting book, we shall never speak again. And there are other benefits. The name of our family will forever be associated with fearless exposure of the sordid truth. Why do you affect this preposterous monocle? To amuse you, my dear. Ah, <sighs> oh, uh, Freddie, my boy. Uh, I'm Gary. Uh, look, I'm afraid I, I'm afraid I missed your drabble, but, uh, but look what I found instead. Uh, this is Leslie. I say, my dear, you must imagine that I'd leap up and bow to kiss your hand. Are you Galahad Threepwood? Large as life and twice as likely to escape arrest. <laughs> <laughs> However do you tolerate being called Liz? I've been called worse. Your nephew is very charming. Please get rid of him. Yes. Um, Freddie, <laughs> Leslie and I should like to have a moment alone. Blimey, um, that, 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 that is, yes, of course. Goodbye. My dear. 500 pounds, another 500 on this date, every year for as long as the book sells, and boy, is it going to sell. My dear, would it surprise you to learn that all my adult life I've been more acquainted with the chink of coin than the rustle of paper? Not at all, I am the same. Why else would I work as bag man for a bunch of thugs like Mammoth? Miss Drabble, I don't suppose. No. Quite absolutely. Would I were 20 minutes younger. So then, to business. Yeah. <coughs> How's that? Perfect, my lord. Uh, now look here, Peach. Tonight. Power's low on the premises. Yes, my lord. <clears throat> well, you and I both know that Stinker plays a dirty game when it comes to pigs. However, my sister was of the view that rather than punching the blighter on the snout, I should be civil to him, neighbour and so forth. Indeed, my lord. Mm. I have taken the liberty of seating Sir Gregory next to Lady Constance, away from your lordship. Mm. Sitting with you is a Miss Drabble. Go capital, capital, cap go, go capital! Who's she? Oh, it doesn't matter. No, I shall look forward to her company. <laughs> oh, Peach! 
Show the big prawns for dinner. I believe they shall, my lord. <laughs> Good evening. You haven't got it, have you? Well, in, in the strictest sense that it is not quite in my possession, no. Um, really, if you fail me in this, I shall take you to the zoological gardens and feed you to the lizards in thin, bloody slices. The, the lizards? Have you ever seen lizards eating meat? Oh, God. No, wait, I haven't finished. Who's this young woman you've suddenly produced? Oh, yes, rather jolly, isn't she? Uh, I met her at the bus stop. The bus stop? Freddie, if brains were dynamite, you couldn't blow the fuzz off a peach. Um, now, don't speak. Get the book. to discourage eating by association with nausea. Food. Uh. I understand that you walked here this evening, Sir Gregory. <clears throat> you do not care for soup. Please don't say that word. It has an unpleasant resonance. Something simpler, sir. I could bring up a runny egg. Should I bring that up, sir? For God's sake, man, go away. Did you hear, Clarence? Sir Gregory walked here this evening. What? What is required of me, I think? Sympathy? Yeah, uh... Lost your chauffeur, eh, Stinker? Well, you can't lord it over chauffeurs, you know. Proud sort of people. Write them a letter of apology. Clarence. Pig pulses. I like to walk. Yes. <laughs> Time was young, Parslow. You used to like to ride round on a slab of beef, hmm? <laughs> Remember when Puffy Banger hoist half a cow so it was suspended over those debs? You took it upon yourself. I remember to... no such thing. Oh. Just as well that I do, then, isn't it? Eh? It's all in my book. What book? My book now. Mm, keep that under your chapeau. It's such a prodigious memory. I, I take my hat off to anybody who can remember anything at all, let alone the story of the prawns. <laughs> what? <laughs> ah, yes. A strange case of the curiously wedged crustaceans, deserving of an entire chapter. <laughs> <laughs> there you were the next morning, rushing up and down Brook Street, sprinkling fivers like confetti. <laughs> Galahad. I forbid you, sir, ever to mention that matter. You should have given me a fiver then. I might have forgotten about it. Prawns! <laughs> 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 Capital! <laughs> Sir Gregory, I entreat you. You cannot conceive the retribution society shall wreak if that book of three points is published. Damn it, Constance, you're a good woman, but you are disgraced by your family. I cannot associate with you until you have resolved this. I wish you good evening. Because he's seen out the pink frilly knickers over his face. <laughs> but there it was, a little tread of shells right across Mayfair. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> That'll be all, thank you, Beach. My lady. Freddie, would you escort your guests from the room? Yeah. Do not move. <clears throat> Clarence. If you fail to prevent the publication of this book, you will have to spend the rest of your life in London, uh, groveling to atone for your brother's atrocious behavior, trying to redeem the name of Emsworth. London? All your life. And on the way to the station, you might as well deliver your pig directly to Sir Gregory. It might go some way to appeasing him for this evening, but I doubt it. 
In the meantime, I am going to my room. Your aunt's quite a power. Mr Threepwood? You, you, you must forgive me, Miss Leslie, if I'm uh, a little preoccupied. It was essential, you see, that I accosted this veteran carrier bloke. Don't despair. You might still be able to do a bit of accosting. Oh. Ah, ruddy thing! Ah. Who's that? Must be Trouble. Oh. Oh. Ow! Oh. 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 You shaven, forged carrier. Now, where's the manuscript? Oh. Right. Well, that was exciting. Yes. Hmm? Oh. 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 I don't want to spend the rest of my life in London. I don't want to spend the rest of my life scrabbling for pennies. Trains that go under the earth. Cars honking and belching. Science which parks that say, don't do this and don't do that. Flowers that one can't even touch. And the air, Galahad. The, 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 Clarence, the air, stop what, it, stop what? it. What? Staring to the abyss. Step back from it. <laughs> I shall not let this terrible thing happen to you. I don't entirely follow. I know you don't. Stay here. Have another beaker of the blushful hippocrine. Mm. I am off to settle Connie's hash. Oh, oh. Look oh, at ahead. Right. How dare you? I dare because I love my brother, and even though it is my firm conviction, Connie, that Clarence should have stuffed your face repeatedly into the nursery carpet to stump the growth of your ridiculous pettiness and snobbery. I love you too. Galahad, if you use the word love one more time, it may be necessary for me to sink my teeth into your larynx. I've decided that hello to all this is not for publication. Don't believe you. I don't blame you, but it's true. Mammoth must forfeit their golden goose. Give me the book. You're not old enough to read it. Give me the book. Yes. Um, actually, that's not possible because I've already given it to the courier. Just have to pop and get it back from her. Dead. People tend not to gurgle when they're dead. Oh, God! Be tough with him. Talk at him out of the side of your mouth. Oh, um, <clears throat> Now, look here. Hand it over and I won't get hurt. Oh, no, no, no. I, I mean... Hand what over? I haven't got any money. Oh, well, that much we have in common. Uh, uh, but I want the manuscript. What manuscript? What, what does it look oh, like? Well, um, like this. I can't see. I've got a ruddy sack on my head. <laughs> I'm telling you, if my hands weren't tied... Your hands are not tied. Huh? Oh. oh. <sighs> you! You! <gasps> Him! Me! Hello, everybody. My God, Threepwood! You'll suffer for this! Well, well which Threepwood will be doing the suffering? Neither. He'll calm down in a minute when he hears what I have to say. Mr Apple, absolutely delightful to find you still here. If you weren't so damn pretty, this would break my heart. I return my fee. All right by me if you lose it on the way home. You deserve a raise. What is all this? The mark of a gentleman, Parcelo, to recognise when a caper has become a liability that may cause harm. Miss Drabble, thank you. I don't trust you, Threewood. You'll print it privately. Excellent idea, but no. As for trust, cocky, behold, the chapter of the prawns. Yep. There we go, darling. <laughs> now, young parsley, go home and have a bath. We shall not speak of what has passed this night. I'm afraid I said that with my fingers crossed. Now, Freddy. 
Did Connie offer you a reward? Oh. If she gives you any trouble, go straight to the medicine cupboard in Beach's pantry. Concealed therein is an account of your aunt sprinting round the rose garden wearing a wicker basket and nothing else. <laughs> oh, great snakes. Why? Uh, for a bet? A bet, of course, but fortunately I was there to record the whole event. Now, you young people will be wanting to kiss each other bonkers. So I bid you good night. Hello. Is life always like this at Blandings? Oh, Lord, no. Yeah, sometimes it can get quite hectic. Huh? Uh, look, what he said, uh, I sh shouldn't want you to... Mm. Mm. I sat next to the most charming girl tonight at dinner. I can't remember her name. Leslie. No, don't think it was Leslie. One of those names that fits both boys and girls. Hamish, possibly. Clarence, in your time, have you met many girls called Hamish? My dear fellow, Hamish is a boy's name. I thought so. Just, mm. just checking. Yeah. You're thundering good health. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Abide your book, Galahad. Have you made arrangements for it? I have, Clarence, yes. I have. Uh. Oh, Beach. I'm so sorry to trespass upon you at this hour, but the excitements of the evening have given me rather a headache. Could I have one of your wonderful powders? Yes, of course, Your Ladyship. Nothing, my lady. It's a bit of rubbish. Give it to me. Her modesty, what remained of it, defended by a small wicker basket. Yes, quite right, Beach. It's a preposterous rubbish. Thank Shall you. I dispose of it? No, no, no. Thank you, Beach. I have a perfectly adequate basket. <laughs> In my room. Oh. Uh.